and welcome to Life 100. This is Rosie and here we talk a little bit about everything in English, in Spanish and sometimes in Spanglish while we wear our onesies and sunglasses because hey, why not? Life is better when we leave it to the 100. So welcome y bienvenidos. Hello again. I am so excited to bring to you today's interview. It's going to be with Selma. I met her about 13 years ago and then I knew she was someone special. And she's going to talk to us about her journey with tattoos, the meaning of them all, from the very first one, a beautiful daisy, to notes from her son, to the latest one, flowers that represent her heritage, the people she loves, and so much more from El Coqui from Puerto Rico to the Evil Eye from Turkey. It's just an interview full of information, experiences, and something for everyone, even the person who has never had a tattoo, so a person that has been through the process several times. So here she is, Selma. Well, hello, Selma. How are you today? Hi, Rosie. I'm doing great. How are you? Oh, I'm doing great, girl. It's so good to share this time with you today. And we're going to talk about some things that people might be thinking about, something that they wonder about, and something that sometimes they even inquire about. And that is tattoos. So tell me about tattoos and your experience with tattoo. What make you get the first one? And what has been your experience so far? Well, my first one I got just before I turned 19. I was in the army mid to late 90s wanted to make sure that it was something that i would still like 50 years from then and so i took some time so is there a special tattoo that you saw that made you think about having one i don't know that it was one in particular it was just felt like i wanted to remember that time in my life because you know 18 i knew that that would be an important time so now I can always look at that tattoo and say, oh, I got that when I was stationed in Augusta, Georgia. And my requirement for my tattoo was that I didn't want to walk into a tattoo place and just pick one of the drawings they had on the wall. Gotcha. You know, Gia stock yes. photos. I decided I love daisies. So I asked a couple people in my unit if they could draw. <laughs> and basically it's a daisy with a petal falling off and it ends on he loves me not not my favorite tattoo but it definitely holds a place in my heart because it was my first it was your first one right and from that point until now how many tattoos do you have? i have 11 tattoos 11 tattoos and i'm sure each one has a significance to each one so tell me about the ones that you have and what do they mean to you yeah, let's go in order of uh, how i when i got them Okay, sounds um, good. The second one I got, when I was 22, I moved to Louisville, Kentucky. I took a job there. Oh, and I decided I wanted to get a tattoo in Louisville to recognize that as a milestone in my life. I just picked up and left my parents' home and moved 800 miles away. But this one took me a little bit longer because I knew I wanted ink, but I didn't know what I wanted. So I decided to go with my heritage. My mother is Puerto Rican. My father is Turkish. So my second tattoo is a coqui. A um, coqui. I know that one. <laughs> <laughs> which is of course native to the island of puerto rico yes it is then the next one that i also got while i lived in Bull was oddly enough i didn't go with my turkish tattoo immediately after it was a drawing that my brother had done in his sketchbook he's always been a very talented artist and this uh, particular one it's really just it's a sad guy hmm. he doesn't have a face but from his posture from how he's holding himself you can tell he's sad but yeah it was just it spoke to me too, that it was the first one on my back and down my spine so it was the most painful at the time that one I really love that one because that that was my brother's artwork the next one I got was an evil eye to honor my Turkish side <laughs> um, and the uh, evil eye it's believed that when people look at you with jealousy whether they mean to or not they wish ill upon you and the evil eye protects you from that evil. oh I see okay haters might hate but I'm protected oh. <laughs> 
And then I stopped getting tests for like 10 years. Mm-hmm. I had another dude in my life. So I started looking into z- different symbols and different things because I wanted this one to be more aesthetically pleasing, not just this is exactly what this is and it represents this, but more of a thoughtful piece. And so spirals came into play. And uh, spirals represent ever, everlasting growth and femininity and so many different things. So I said, okay, I want a spiral tattoo. And the words, I am who I always wanted to be, came to me. I don't remember in conversation or something. And I said, I am. You know, if growing up I met me now, I think I'd be good with who I am as a person. So I got the tattoo artist who, I picked the font and, you know, he put the words in a spiral pattern. Nice. And so that was that one. And then after that, it kind of sparked my need for more tattoos. I was like, why did I wait so long? I need to get um, more. Right. And then one after that was my son had written me a note uh, when he was six years old. It was super sweet, you know, just like a dear mommy, I love you. But the wording was, I will love you every day. And then he drew a uh, little stick figure heads, one for him and one for me. And I still carry the note with me in my purse everywhere I go. But I had them tattoo the note onto my leg. And then the next one, a friend of mine said she'd get tattoos together. So we got an infinity symbol. And the infinity symbol is the words, live the life you love, love the life you live. She's been a very dear friend for years and years. And so I said, yeah, let's do it. We got that on our rib cage, which for those of you wondering, that is probably one of the most painful places to get a tattoo. And thank goodness it only took 15 to 20 minutes because I would not be able to take much more than that. I went first and then I told her, it doesn't even hurt. She's like, I was right here. I heard you. I'm like, oh yeah, good luck. And then my next couple of tattoos were artwork right off the racks. Friday the 13th, several tattoo shops will do $13 tattoo specials. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. I mean, artwork is an investment, you know, and it's going to be on your body forever. So you don't always want a cheap tattoo. But when they do $13 specials, it's a very small tattoo. It's usually an an outline of something and I went so I was looking at the it's like flash art and so I was looking and I said oh it was an outline of a cat and at that point I had just gotten my third cat I was like yep this cat outline is super cute so I got it that's when I started thinking you know what I like tattoos for what they are they don't have to have a super deep meaning. It's some people won't get one unless it has deep meaning. And that at one point in my life was me. If it doesn't mean a lot, I won't do it. I don't know. It's just something fun about standing around waiting. Oh, it's my turn. Oh, here's $13. Thank you for my tattoo. There we go. Uh, but my next $13 tattoo was uh, just like a little, like a leafy vine that it just looked super cute. So I got that on the side of my wrist. Now with everything being Zoom meetings and everything, I realize how much I rest my chin on my right hand. <laughs> Everybody can see my leafy vine tattoo. And it's not intentional because I've had it for several months. But I just, I notice it more now as I sit and see myself on screen. And then my other one, I have loved rhinos. I did a report on them in sixth grade. And I just, I fell in love with them as an animal. They're my favorite. So I knew I wanted something to do with rhinos. But I mean, rhinos are big and intimidating. Or they could be cutesy. And so I wanted a a balance. And I found a, a silhouette of a her mother and baby rhino. So I went to the tattoo place and I said, can I get just the outline of this? And they said, yeah, absolutely. And they asked if I wanted like watercolor or whatever. And I said, no, oh, I just, I think it's good standing alone like this. And my son suggested putting three little hearts between the mom and the baby to show that they love each other. So that's what sets it apart from the original silhouette uh, wall art is it's and you can tell us because one's slightly smaller than the other and they have three little hearts. Between so them. they have three little hearts in between them? or mm-hmm. And then that's 10. And then my most recent one I got two weeks ago. And this one I've been planning for years. I, my, like I said, my mom is Puerto Rican. My father is Turkish. And uh, my brother, sister, and I were born in California. My nieces were born in different states, Arizona and Texas. My son was born in Florida. And I was like, well, how do I tie that all in together? Like, how does that work well together? And I thought about it and I was like, the national and the state flowers. Looked them all up and it was uh, hibiscus for Puerto Rico, tulip for Turkey, um, golden poppy for California, blue bonnet for Texas, saguaro cactus blossom for Arizona, and of course, orange blossom for Florida. I didn't know how I wanted them to look. I knew I wanted to incorporate those flowers. And so... I found an artist who had amazing floral work, 
And I just, I follow his on Instagram and I said, yep, there's the guy. There's the guy that I trust to do the artwork. And, and then I turned 40 last year. And that was, I was like, that's what I'll do. For my 40th birthday, I will get, so on my birthday, I had scheduled to get that tattoo. Well, it's by far the largest and most colorful of any of my tattoos. And so it would take a lot longer and it would be more money. And at that point, a couple came up and I said, you know what, let me reschedule it. So I pushed it back and then I had to reschedule it. Let's just do an open-ended appointment date and I'll, I'll reschedule eventually. Of course, in order to trust the artist to do the artwork, you're expected to put down a deposit. And that goes towards the price of the tattoo. Okay. That is the, it's actually the first tattoo I've gotten that I scheduled with an artist that said, come up with the artwork. Then in March, I said, you know, I, I'm ready. You know, I'm almost 41. Like, it's time. So I scheduled it for April 4th. Well, at that point, the pandemic had um, already started and business had shut down. And if it wasn't essential, you couldn't do it. So no tattoo for Selma. We rescheduled, we pushed it back a month, and then we pushed it back another month, and mid-June is finally when we were able to do it. I hadn't seen the artwork. I've been waiting for it for over a year. Wow, so it was a surprise then to you. Right. Everything, yes. Right. Absolutely loved it. And I was like, oh, that's much bigger than I thought. <laughs> and uh, he just looked at me, he's like, well, it's a lot of flowers. And I said, no, 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 you're right, it you're right, you're sense. right. It makes sense, it makes sense, right? <laughs> I'm like, you're right, we'll figure it out. So he took it to the copier and he downsized it, I think, like 5%. The difference in size wasn't enough, but it was like, well, I think it takes away from it. And I said, let's do it. Let's do the big one. So you did the original one, the original I sketch. did the original one. Uh -huh. It took three hours. Three hours. And I am absolutely in love with it. That's Don't what I was going to ask you. After all this waiting, I mean, you've been trying to do this and you've been planning for this over a year and then everything happened and finally you got it done. What, what do you feel when you saw the final result? My first thought was, wow, that's really big. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but after that, it was just, wow. There were, of course, a, a few times through the course of that year where I was like, well, maybe I'm just not supposed to get this tattoo. Maybe it's the universe telling me, eh, maybe hold off. Maybe you shouldn't do it. But ultimately, and he said, he's like, I didn't think I was ever going to get to tattoo you. And I was like, who are you telling? <laughs> like, I didn't think I'd ever get this one. But it was just a wonderful experience. And, and it's funny because everybody's different and so I, I laid there for a while trying to work through the pain and I'm like do I talk do I not talk a few sections over there was somebody super chatty with their artist and I'm like should I be talking more should I do I'm that sorry. <laughs> you know but over the course of the three hours it waffled between we would just talk 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 and then it was just very quiet where yeah. I was just kind of thinking very hard about not moving, not flinching, because I wanted to make sure that it was good artwork. I, I didn't want there to be a shaky line because I couldn't hold still. And so I'm just so grateful to him and his artwork. Even when we were messaging and I told him what the flowers represented, he's like, oh, that's dope. And I was like, oh, thank you. Thank you. That's good. That's, <laughs> that's great. And, and now, on my perspective, right, the fact that you were able to make it happen during this uh, period of time, which is a historic time, it adds another layer to the significance of it, right? Exactly. I, I was very concerned because I'm going to get tattooed in the middle of a pandemic, but tattoo places are held to a higher standard just on a regular basis. They may expect to attain cleanliness and sterility and all these things. So add another level and everybody that was in there was wearing a mask. Everybody was distanced, which normally they don't have people right next to each other getting tattooed anyway. Right, um, right. I felt safe mm -hmm. in that I didn't feel like I was jeopardizing anybody's safety or well-being. And, and I helped contribute to this tattoo artist who had been out of work for three months. Yeah, because know? the local businesses, those are, I think, they're the ones that suffer the most exactly. uh, when, when there are things like that. But like you said, because that type of business is actually monitored. Okay? So this is another layer to the security and the safety that needs to happen. And talking about that, see, for the people who are thinking about it or wondering about it, I'm like, mm, should I do this? The first thing is to want it. And then you kind of start thinking about the look and feel of it and you make an appointment then you go for it now from the time that you go for it to the time that it's done can you tell me from your experience how was it what a person should expect when they have in a tattoo even though you have done it in different states 
uh, in the United States, but what is the basic thing that a person can expect when they go to have a tattoo? They will have you sign a waiver saying that either you are of age to make this decision, that you are not under the influence of alcohol. Of course, you can make bad decisions as well as it thins your blood, so you're more likely to bleed more during the process. Irresponsible on so many levels for the artist and for the um, person themselves. Just understand the process isn't complete once the tattoo artist puts the saran wrap or the bandage on. It's the healing process is also extremely important in ensuring that you'll have artwork for years that you'll be proud of. So can you tell me more about that? What takes place after you leave uh, with your tattoo and uh, the protective things that they put to keep it in a good way? What happened after that? What, what is your next step? And this, by no means, is a recommendation for anybody just based on your experience. What is based the next on thing my to do? experience, every tattoo artist has their own, or every shop, every artist has their own suggestions. And it's super important to listen to the artist that you're working with. Uh-huh. More than half of the ones that I've seen will say an antibacterial soap, unscented antibacterial soap. And you wash it three to four times a day. And then... As soon as you do that, you apply an ointment. It's like protecting the layer of skin. Protect, it's a uh, skin protectant. Correct. Uh-huh. Correct. So probably like the first few days, that's the process. Three, four times a day, you clean it, and then you apply the protective ointment. And when you um, say for the first few days, about how many days are you talking about? Three to four. Mm-hmm. And of course, the tattoo artist will always say, they will tell you, and they have little pamphlets, little leaflets where they'll hand it to you. And because they do it all the time, they know best, okay. you know. So it, it, does it change with the size of the tattoo or the colors, or is a standard, based on what you your experience, uh, is a standard number of days per tattoo? I'd say it's a standard number of days, okay. but definitely the bigger the tattoo, the more work it is. Uh-huh. <laughs> this one that I got is on my calf. It's a little hard, a little tricky to uh, reach, and you can't soak it. They suggest staying out of the sun for a couple weeks to make sure you don't get sunburned. You can't soak it in water in any way just to make sure that it heals safely and well. One of my tattoos, I did end up peeling. Not peeling. I had a, um, a scab because, of course, it scabs. It's scarring. Um, okay. But you cannot peel the scabs. You cannot pull them off because you will pull the color out. Right. And so my poor little Koki is missing a part of his outline because I couldn't. <laughs> I couldn't take it. You couldn't resist. It's like, uh, <laughs> yeah. this got to go. It's got to go. <laughs> yeah. So getting him repaired is on my list. Okay. So yeah. it's, it's a matter uh, of having it retouched and relined. Right. And that was one of the things that the artist, when I got my newest one, said, he's like, you know, this is a big piece. Please, you know, watch for it. Be careful. If anything happens, give me a call. They want to make sure that their artwork is out there looking as best as it can. A couple of weeks since you had it done, and you say that it's not completely healed. It's still in the process of healing. It's still itchy. It's still itchy. Oh, okay. (laughs) So you still have to behave. You're like, uh, no, this is not going to yeah, be. And I have to tell myself, don't scratch. Yeah. You'll ruin the artwork. Yeah, because that's big art. It's a, yeah. it's a beautiful art. Yes, yeah, so all the flowers and all the details, definitely it needs to preserve the integrity of the of the art that was there, right? Right. And, and I think making sure that you take care of it well is just as important as picking a reputable shop and all these things. I think it all plays in to ensure that you have best representation of what you were looking for. Yeah, I was going to ask you about that. That's my next question. So for someone who is looking at don't know exactly uh, where to start, uh, what kind of things is a good idea to look for selecting uh, the shop to go to? Ask people with tattoos. That is probably the... I know you can... Now we have Google and all these things and you can go online and research and that's fine. But I think it's important to talk to people who know. If you see somebody with an amazing piece of art, ask them. Say, hey, where did you get that? Where would you suggest I go? Where would you suggest I stay away from? But I definitely... I think that's one of the things that I'm most grateful for is that I thought to ask people with tattoos. And so far, your experience has been positive all through the entire tattoo experience. Every single one, with the exception of the pain of my rib tattoo. <laughs> <laughs> ah, now you touch the next question. That's, I think, one of the biggest questions that people ask, right? Does it mm-hmm. hurt? Does it hurt? And 
how bad it is. And oh, but, and there are people, oh, well, I have high pay tolerance and all that. Tell me, number one, let's put it out there, the big elephant in the room, does it hurt? Yes. It does. <laughs> That's it. That's You're poked <laughs> repeatedly with a needle. <laughs> Yes, people, it, it hurts. I mean, that is yeah. permanent on your body. Like you said, there are needles involved. Tell me, what does it feel like? And what, if you can, what you can compare it to? It's a repetitive pinching or poking. And again, it depends completely on what area of your body. And if you go online, there are several different maps of the human body that will show you in different colors where it hurts the most. Like they'll show red for areas that hurt a lot, like your feet, your hands, your face, your ribs, anywhere on bone. When I got my first tattoo, that was one of the things the artist said was the more fleshy an area, the less pain you'll feel. Okay. Okay. Makes right. sense. So Selma, you mentioned that the last artwork, it took how many hours? Three? Three hours. Three yeah. hours. So how do you manage those three hours, the pain and everything involved with it? What took place then? Well, in between each step, he applied some lidocaine because after he does the outline, the skin's open. And uh, once the lidocaine is applied, it kind of, it soaks into the skin and it, it doesn't numb it completely, but I could definitely feel a difference between when he first started the outline and when he first started the shading. Mm -hmm. it, he asked if I could feel it, and I said, it feels like the needle is 100 miles away, but I can still feel it. And then once he finished the shading, then he applied another layer of lidocaine, gave it a few minutes, and then he did the color. And I think that's how I was able to make it through. Of course, the pain is still there. You still feel it because you know, there are parts aren't quite numbed. But it, that process definitely helps. And that was because it's my biggest and because it's the only one that's taken over an hour. It was the first experience I had where they applied that to help with the pain. Yeah, that, that's good to know because that's something that for the people who are doing this for the first time can ask what is involved regarding the tattoo that they want to have, like how long it's going to take and how is that going, what's going to take place during that time. I mean, three hours without moving, right? Because you, you cannot move. You can't move. You can move. That's important, <laughs> right? That's what they tell you. You can move. Yeah. So. <laughs> and every time the artist would ask me, are you okay? Are you ready? You doing Okay. I would ask him the same. I'm like, you okay? Are you tired? Do you need a break? Yeah, because um, it goes both ways, right? Important. Right. Yeah. yeah, it goes both ways. Absolutely. Right. And just, I think it's important to know, you have to ask yourself, do you want it visible to others or is it more of a personal thing? Uh, my yeah. first four tattoos are on my back and the front of my shoulders. Uh -huh. So if I was wearing professional work clothes, you couldn't tell that I had tattoos. Yeah. Because it was still late 90s, early 2000s. I mean, more and more people were getting tattooed, but it was still, there was still a taboo about it. Still perception of people with tattoos. I had a security guard at one of my jobs uh, complaining about somebody who came in for a job and he's like, oh, these people with tattoos, brains aren't right. And I just looked at him and I said, you know, I have four tattoos. And he just, he's like, uh, but, uh, I... I'm sorry. I don't know. It's okay. Just I, I, you have to understand that you don't know. Right. And then he apologized. He's cute about it, and I walked away. You know. <laughs> and then now I have re on my forearms. They're visible. You know, I can wear a cardigan to work, and you won't see them. Or I can wear a short sleeve blouse, and you'll see them. But again, it's where you want to go in life, mm -hmm. and you have to understand that some industries, some positions, some people are more accepting of them than others. Right. And that's just the reality of things. So right. it's a decision and it's for a long term permanent thing. And yes, there are, there are ways to get it removed or altered or whatever. But the bottom line is that uh, it's permanent up to a yes. point. Right. So we established that, yes, it does hurt. It's painful. <laughs> that uh, needles are involved because that's the way that the ink is transferred to it correct mm -hmm. okay or or if somebody asks you what did it feel like to you what would you say actually it's just like um like just repetitive pinching uh-huh uh-huh yeah um, in the same area like if you just pinch yourself once it's like oh that's not so bad but if you do that same motion over and over and over again it's hurt a 
little bit more. Yeah, so it, it's I think it's different for everybody. You know, everybody has their different pain tolerance. I talked to people that said, oh, I got my ribs tattooed and it was fine. Well, you're crazy because most people I talk to say that's the worst. So, of course, everybody's different, but definitely I think those um, roadmaps available online that helps. have a good representation. Yeah, it helps you at least give you an idea of what to expect and then right. each experience is different but at least you know a starting point right right so right. talking about starting point right so you have all these tattoos and mm -hmm. the big one that you just had two mm -hmm. weeks ago right mm -hmm. number one do you prepare mentally to get a tattoo and for this one which was several hours long to get it done how do you prepare for it I, I took some ibuprofen about half an hour before the session. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Same <laughs> like me when I go to the dentist. It's the same thing, yep. right? Yep, yeah, yep, yep. Just uh, prepare. Make sure that you're well hydrated, that you feel well that day. Because all, all that's going to play into it. Because ultimately, you're, you're there. And you can't really move. You can't go anywhere. Of course, if you need a break, you can tell your artist, hey, I just I need a minute. Fortunately for me, because of the size of it, he did the outline. We took a break. He did the shading, we took a break, then he did the color, and it was done. But definitely just, I don't know, now I'm getting so excited about it, I want another one. You just got another one? <laughs> <laughs> but, but, but not yet, just give me a few more minutes, and then you can go. <laughs> If no, I have to go with you, you know, and, right, uh, right. and, and, and you're in Florida, I'm in Texas, it's going to take me a little while, so, you know, either way, you need to wait, so there we go. I'll wait, I'll wait. Uh, um, you see, that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah, but it's just um, the excitement of it. It's something very personal. Even if it's some flash art you pick off a sheet, it's something that I'm getting on me for me to look at. It's just exciting. It's just, an, it's like a self-expression in one way. Yes. Yeah. Right? Yes, and I've used it as to record milestones in my life. Oh, this is happening. Let me get this. This is happening. Oh, I need a tattoo. I, I want to remember this time in my life. And, you know, some people keep a journal. I keep a journal, too. But everybody has their own way of wanting to express themselves, and I think and it's just beautiful. I and mean, people have asked me, well, how is it going to look when you're 80? Well, it's going to look awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Because I can look back and show people this was my journey. That's a beautiful way of putting it, actually. Your journey. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And do you have any favorites, either the color, different colors, or or it depends what you're looking for? It depends on what I'm looking for, definitely. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. I have some that are colorful. I have some that are not so much. My favorite one is the one that of the note that my son wrote for me. Okay. Um, and that doesn't have any color associated with it. Uh -huh. um, it's just, it's beautiful for me. But of all these tattoos, the one I've gotten the most compliments on has been my little $13 cat tattoo. Look at that. People ask me all the time, and of course, you know, like when you buy a cute dress and somebody's like, oh, it's so cute, $5. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I will tell every single person it was my $13 tattoo. <laughs> <laughs> that goes with the description of it, right? Exactly. <laughs> you want to exactly. know, I tell you about it. <laughs> yep. And so every time, as a kid, I think kids learn superstition and things like that and, and it kind of means more um but as i've grown up friday the 13th it's not scary now i'm like oh okay what am i gonna get this time <laughs> I'm like ooh, 13 dollars that is tattoo day people so let me right. think about it friday right. like not on the 13th like on the 9th you're like oh wait the 13th is coming along hey yes hey. <laughs> Yes, and of course, you know, not every month has a Friday the 13th, and it's um, only a couple times a year, and right. not all shops do it. Oh, right, um, yeah, yeah. I have the same one that I've gone to for uh, both of my Friday the 13th. <laughs> I am patiently waiting for the next one. There we go, there we go. And talking about waiting for the next one, what kind of things for, for the people who is the first time that they're doing this, that you look for in a tattoo artist that give them an idea of what they might need to look for as well that they're willing to listen mm -hmm. that they understand your vision maybe tell them this is my first tattoo and most tattoo artists and i'm not going to say all because there are some tattoo artists that don't have any tattoos that's just what they do as their work but i mean they get it we all remember our first tattoo and so i think it's important to start the process with this is my first tattoo what can you tell me and i think that's the best way to prepare and know that if they're willing to give you advice that's great and that's somebody that you can trust if not maybe keep looking just because you want a tattoo right now doesn't mean that the first tattoo shop you come across is the one to go with 
is the right one, right? Yeah, right. of course. It has to feel right because right. it's your it's gonna be in your body and okay. you're gonna be with it with you. So it has to feel that you're in the right place at the right time and getting the right art <laughs> that you want, right? And, exactly. Uh, <laughs> exactly. So, and I mean every artist has their own specialty. Of course, you know, a lot of them can do if you want writing, they'll do writing. If you want a bust, a portrait of somebody. There are certain artists that are amazing at that. And you look at the artwork and you're like, wow, that really looks like the picture. Others, you might look at it and say, that is not what my baby looks like. Whoa. Mm -hmm. And so I think if you want something, a bigger piece or something more meaningful, it definitely pays to do your research and look online. I found this artist, he worked at one of the tattoo places that I had gone to. He didn't do any of my previous tattoos, but I was looking through their gallery that usually now you'll tattoo places will have a website and they'll have galleries of their artwork on there. And so you can look and be like, oh, you know, I want a portrait or I want flowers or I want a dragon or, you know, whatever it is that you might be into. Uh, make sure that their artwork speaks to you. There are some that specialize in like what I call old tiny tattoos or, you know, more vintage, what used to be the common font for tattoos or the common look for tattoos. And some people don't like that. Some people want that. And it's really just uh, seeking out the one that is what you want. Yeah, it's like a right match between the tattoo and the artist that are going to bring it to life, right? Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And then, of course, I have to ask you, will you get more? <laughs> I think you already answered that, but let me ask yes. you again. Will you yes. get more? <laughs> yes. I've only gone twice for Friday the 13th specials, but uh, the last time I went, there were a couple I was picking between. I already know that the next one, I just have to figure out where I want it. Okay. <laughs> and what, you, you have an idea what it's going to be at this point? It's just a matter of where? Yes. Okay. Okay. No, you already know what oh, you yes. want. <laughs> oh, yes. I, I might actually skip the next couple of Friday the 13th just because um this last one was a big one uh, <laughs> I might okay. need a break <laughs> <laughs> that was good for a while for a couple of Fridays yeah. 13th right yeah <laughs> but you definitely are going back for more definitely definitely, definitely. Yeah. of course everybody has their own preference I don't want to be completely covered all of mine are spaced out they're all very independent pieces they don't bleed into one another. And, um, and you take the time to choose where it's going to be. That yes. You say, okay, I want this to do in this particular area, and then that's it. Well, let me tell you, I have learned a lot about it. I can't wait for you to go to the next one and show me. <laughs> Great. Well, Selma, I had a tons of fun. I hope you did too. Uh, this was great. I mean, tattoo is just, it's art. It's art. And there's so many things that can be expressed by it. And each person has their own experiences with it. But as far as I know, you have had a great one. Is that right? That is absolutely right. Yes. That's absolutely right. Okay. Well, thank you so much for being here with us today. Okay. Thank okay. you. Bye. Bye. So here until next time, thanks for listening and like, comment, subscribe on the website or on Insta. Go ahead, stay in touch because Life 100, here we go.